The internet makes the world smaller, more connected. We used to call it the global village. The world became smaller because people were now able to connect with each other. Many enterprises developed along with messaging apps, emails, which were able to communicate with the global community. With its vast benefits, issues regarding data protection and privacy also came to the fore. Now, more than ever, protection of data and the privacy of users behind the data when such data crosses international boundaries is something to consider. Data localization is a proposed solution which has been doing the rounds. It, however, takes away the connectedness of the internet, its essence. Data localization refers to the concept of restricting flow of information within the territorial boundaries of countries. China, Russia and many other countries are implementing variations of data localization. They require user data generated within their jurisdiction to be stored in servers in those jurisdictions. Some countries even require presence of the internet company in their own jurisdiction. The arguments for data localization are twofold. The trade argument. We have now heard the oft-popular phrase, data is the new oil. Given the economic potential of data, many thinkers and countries feel that data should only be accessed by domestic enterprises or companies located within the territorial boundaries of these countries. This would help domestic companies harvest the data of their local users and prevent international competition. Cool small apps like Musical.ly or even potentially Google or Facebook would not be available to Indian users. Arguments are also made that transfer of data outside countries could be a point of revenue and taxation for the country. So if your data moves out of the country, there would be a tax on it, much like import and export duties. The security argument. This is the tricky one. It has merits, demerits and is mostly misunderstood. Arguments are made that in order to protect the rights of users, prevent foreign surveillance and provide access to data for law enforcement and national security, Data localization is necessary. This argument has been made by the Sri Krishna committee in the white paper it published and is reportedly going to be put forth in the full report as it turns out. Basically, the argument is that if data is not stored in a location which our country has jurisdiction over, the government will not be able to access it and protect the rights of its users. Let's have a look at the problems with each argument. The first, trade argument. There is enough research on this by leading scholars such as Anupam Chandra. The research suggests that in an order to monetize and nationalize data, we will end up destroying the internet's potential. Free flow of information is the backbone of the internet. Let's not destroy that essence. In one line, this would be the equivalent of killing the goose which lays the golden egg. Number two, the security argument. Let's clarify, there's nothing more important than the rights of users, nothing. So transfer of data and flow of information outside the country to the extent that it protects the rights of users is welcome and essential. But let's unpack this problem a little further. Does this mean we should treat every country with skepticism? Have we not faced these problems before when it comes to trade issues or the movement of people? Have we not found solutions then? We have and we can. There are mechanisms and we'll discuss them in a little bit. But before that, let's unpack the real problem. The problem is of control. Governments seek control over the data of their citizens. And once the data is transferred outside the country, they fear losing such control. It is so curious that in the white paper by the Sri Krishna committee, the paper states the example of the Microsoft Ireland case as an example for protecting user rights. In this case, the government sought data and Microsoft refused to give that data as the data resided outside the country. The problem was of government accessing data of its citizens, not of protecting the citizens' right to privacy. And that's what's important. At the drafting committee for the Indian Privacy Code, we deliberated this issue. The trade and monetization argument does not have a leg to stand on. The security issue, however, is important and needs to be tackled. We have leaned on the recently enacted European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, the GDPR. The GDPR provides a mechanism called the adequacy status. Under this mechanism, each country is evaluated in terms of the protections to privacy provided to its citizens and the data within its boundaries. If such protections in these countries are found adequate, such countries are provided an adequacy status. Transfer of data to such countries will be allowed. 
In case a country does not have an adequacy status, the Indian Privacy Code shifts the burden onto companies. The Privacy Commissioner is empowered to provide something called standard contract clauses. These contract clauses would have to be within contracts of companies where flow of data is involved between jurisdictions. These standard contract clauses do two things. First, this places the obligation on companies to ensure that the data is protected under the same regulations and same protections as would be provided under the Privacy Code in India. Further, it also places such companies within the jurisdiction of Indian courts. These protections, along with international mechanisms such as MLATs, Mutual Legal Assistant Treaties, would be the way to go.